I have the right to make a phone call, Detective whatever your name is. That phone is an outside line. Hello, boss. It's Michael Clark. I'm still on the Armstrong kidnap, but there's a small problem. I got caught being someplace I shouldn't be. I'm at the police station. No, I'm not under arrest. Just questioning. Fire me. Why? The station's integrity? You're kidding me, right? If you think I've screwed up that badly, then fire me. Got that? Fire me. Yes, do it. That didn't go well. I think I got my point across. What happens now? Go ahead. Then we'll have a chat. This is all a game to him, and he doesn't expect to lose. This is all a game to him, and an extra computer so I don't have to go all the way out to my desk. I'll add these to the file. Anything that will erase Clark's smile. Shiny facial hair. The good news is that it's gold. Now that we've taken your DNA, we can begin. Interview of suspect Michael Clark, 6 p.m., March 30th, 2019. This interview is being recorded. By elves behind the mirror, no doubt? You were arrested at a crime scene where you damaged police barricade tape. I'll pay for a new roll. That's a Class A misdemeanor, and it carries a $500 fine. Oh, that's unfortunate. To begin with, where were you on the night Daisy Armstrong was kidnapped? I was watching TV in my motel room but I had my police scanner on. I heard the first reports that the little girl was missing. No way the police at the scene were gonna let me get close. I set my alarm so I could get on the story first thing in the morning and tried to sleep. It was difficult. Can anybody confirm where you were? No, afraid not. I was alone and sleepless, a sad combination. And I realized a bad alibi. You say you're a journalist, a stringer for Channel 6 News in Boston. I sell my stuff to lots of media outlets. Your camera was in your pickup. You didn't want to take pictures of the crime scene? I like to get the lay of the land. Once I see the story I want to tell, then I start documenting it. I don't know any journalist who works a case without their camera close at hand. He thinks he's invincible. I need to play his ego. That's the key. What are you doing in the Berkshires? And what is your connection to the Armstrong case? For the past few months, I've been working on a big case. Boston 6 News was looking forward to my next story. The Armstrongs have been on my list of potential targets for a long time. I changed gears when Daisy was kidnapped and started investigating the Armstrongs. So you just stumbled on a major kidnapping story during your stay in the Berkshires. Yeah, I was researching PCBs in the river for crying out loud. Then, wow, the Armstrongs. That's not a Science Sunday report. That's a lead. Sometimes you just get lucky. Your camera in the pickup. There were photos of Daisy from before she was kidnapped. The Armstrongs are a famous family like the Kennedys or Hollywood couples. Gossip sites love them. People want to see how they live. I started out just stealing candid shots. Paparazzi live on getting that one exclusive shot. Steamy, intimate, whatever. Then when the kidnapping happened, I realized I was here first. What an opportunity. And I jumped at it. You have an answer for everything. You're not very good at this, are you? How long have you been on the job? Long enough to put you away for life. If you killed that little girl.
Let's start with why you went to the cabin. If the police were interested in it, I was interested in it. How did you find the cabin? Police radio. I heard the forensic team getting directions. Then, when they finally left the scene late this morning, I jumped in my pickup and hurried on up the mountain. You tore the tape at the entrance to the property and stomped all over the house. This constitutes a serious violation of a crime scene, Mr. Clark. I'm aware of that. I'm sorry. I'll pay the fine. But I got carried away. It isn't often I get a crime scene all to myself. He's enjoying himself. I need to throw him off balance somehow. Surprise him into making an error. Explain to me again how you got to the crime scene. I listened in on the police radio frequency. Anybody can do it with a scanner. I headed for the crime scene in my trusty pickup, like I've done for years. After the forensic team left, I needed to see the crime scene for myself. I got to the bunker just before you arrived. You said you've been driving that pickup for years? You heard right. Thanks to it, I never miss a story. You say you've been using your pickup for years, but the title certificate is not in your name. The truck belongs to somebody named Stephen Baker. Okay, I don't get why the pickup is so important to you, but I guess my ego made me say that. Yeah, the pickup was lent to me by a friend. I couldn't afford it even with a loan. I think you stole it, Mr. Clark. You needed a pickup like that for our mountain roads. So you stole that one. Try proving it. But while you run off on some wild goose chase, you can't hold me. Let's move on to the gas cans and what we found in your pockets when you were brought in here today. That sounds exciting. In addition to the gasoline in the back of your pickup and another in the bunker, you had a lighter and gloves in your pockets. You were going to set fire to the bunker and every scrap of evidence inside. Where to begin? I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I wasn't planning to use these things to destroy the crime scene. I've been around crime scenes my entire career. I brought the gloves so as not to contaminate it with my fingerprints. The gas can in the back of my pickup, I use it to put gas in the truck. Gas stations are few and far between in your mountains. I didn't know there was a gas can in the bunker. If that's true, I did you a favor. My arrival obviously scared off somebody planning to burn everything. Do you also have an excuse for your lighter? The lighter? I'm trying to quit smoking. I use the lighter as a reminder not to start again. I know that Clark is lying. I need to reconstruct the whole sequence of events in order to understand what happened. Detective gets it right. I'll tell you what really happened. You waited until forensics left and arrived in your probably stolen pickup. You grabbed a can of gasoline from your truck. You then went into the cabin to check if Daisy had been found. You then went straight to the bunker to see if it had been discovered, planning to set it on fire and destroy all the evidence inside. Before you could start the fire, you heard me arrive. So you hastily left your gas can and closed the hatch. You didn't think I could open the bunker. If I hadn't found you, I expect you would have burned down the cabin too. I'm not gonna make fun of you, detective, or how you handled my interrogation. You're obviously very new at this. I swear I'm telling the truth. I didn't know the bunker was there until the moment you showed up. I seem to have trumped your entire police force. When I get the DNA results from the bunker, we'll continue this conversation. You have no concrete evidence against me whatsoever. The lab results will be in soon. You won't get away with this. See that call? That's your arrest warrant and a one-way ticket to prison. I'll be right back. Hello, sir. I think I found the man who kidnapped Daisy Armstrong. I'm interrogating him now. Hold on, Detective Luck. I have some bad news. Someone set fire to the cabin in the bunker. The 
The fire department is on the scene, but they say it's too late. Th that's impossible. My suspect has been in the interrogation room with me all evening. We can't hold him. Suzanne Moreau. Her fingerprints are on the wine bottle found in the cabin. We also found an unknown person's fingerprints, but they don't match your suspects. Sir, with all due respect, I'm convinced Michael Clark is involved. Detective, I'm cutting you some slack already. But we cannot hold your suspect simply because you're convinced he's guilty. We have evidence that Suzanne was working with an accomplice, Noah Garrity. I order you to release the reporter and arrest this Moreau. L let me just check my last lead. The DNA analysis of the hair found in the bunker safe. The results just came in. I know how hard this is. I... Okay. Get the DNA results. Detective Locke, I will give you one hour maximum. Then you close the file and arrest Suzanne Moreau. Thank you, sir. Who did you call earlier? An editor from the Boston Six News. An editor you repeatedly said should fire you. That was your accomplice, wasn't it? You were telling him to start the fire. An accomplice? I know it was Noah you called. I'm saying nothing more without the presence of my lawyer. Stay right where you are. I'm not done with you yet. Wow. Do I hear grounds for a lawsuit? Some poor, innocent woman is being accused instead of you. You set her up, didn't you? You have to let me go, detective. All I need is one more phone call to the lab. I know it's you, and I'm going to prove it. Hello, this is Joanna Locke. I need the results of the DNA test I asked you for. Hi, detective. Sorry, we only have the DNA sequence. We haven't had time to compare it with the suspects yet. It'll take seven more hours. I'm sorry, but you are not the only one on the waiting list. Send your analysis to my computer in the office. I'll do the comparison myself. I need authorization. I have a murderer who is going to walk free unless I get those results now. Fine, we'll send it to you right away, but I'll have to log this. It's my last chance. I don't understand. I was sure it would be Clark's hair. I'll have to let him go. You can leave. Sorry it didn't work out for you, detective. Maybe you should consider a career change. We are not done. Oh, but we are, my dear. We are done. I had no choice but to return to the Armstrong house to arrest Suzanne Moreau. The arrest warrant for Suzanne Moreau. Suzanne was set up by Clark and Noah. They are the kidnappers, but I'm not giving up. When Suzanne comes up for trial, I will fight for her defense. But for now, the district attorney is in charge. If I want to stay a detective, he always has the last word. Hmm, the door is wide open. How strange. Hey, is anyone there? Miss Moreau? 
Miss Moreau? This is Detective Locke. Miss Moreau, can you hear me? It's me, Detective Locke. You must get up now. Miss Moreau? Miss Moreau, can you hear me? Suzanne Moreau is dead. There are no traces of blows or injuries on her body. She doesn't seem to have defended herself from anyone. It appears Suzanne killed herself by ingesting all these drugs. Suzanne was telling the truth about her mother. She must have realized at last how she'd been used. The death of her mother would have been an additional shock, and the self-righteous court of social media was as quick as usual to try and convict her. Suzanne's diary is missing. Her glasses are missing. I called the district attorney to inform him. This is Detective Locke, sir. I'm at the Armstrong house. Have you arrested Suzanne Moreau? She's dead, sir. Apparent suicide, but I need a forensics team. She killed herself out of remorse for her part in the crime. We don't know that yet. I'm calling forensics now, but I wanted you to know. What a mess. Stay on site until forensics arrive. Yes, sir. Standing by. The investigation was officially closed. I was certain that she was innocent, and Clark had been responsible for four deaths and then vanished into thin air with a million dollars. Dollars marked, though, and not easily spent. I didn't care if the case was officially closed. I swore, Mr. Poirot, whatever it took, I would hunt him down. <laughs>